Peace will fill the world when we finally understand That only from within can it be spread throughout the land Every single person living peace in what we do Only then will our dream come true Only then will our dream come true Only then will our dream come true Good morning, friends. I'm Leona Evans, minister at Unity of San Luis Obispo, an inclusive, progressive, spiritual community affirming the good in all life. Welcome to our Sunday morning live stream. It's always such a pleasure for me to be here, and I want to welcome you all. I'm delighted that you've chosen to be here this morning. Well, this is a very special time of the week. I always look forward to it because this is the time when I can share with those of you around the world that you are a light, that you were created in love, that you have so many gifts and talents to share, and that you have the opportunity by changing the way you believe and see things to live your life to the fullest. So. Unity of San Luis Obispo, as I said, is a progressive spiritual community. And by that, I mean we are open, receptive, and responsive to all people everywhere, to all life. We have a recognition of the equality of all people and the love that exists in potential within each of us. We do believe in nonviolent action We believe that peace on earth is our divine birthright. And although we never said it was easy to experience, we have taken it upon ourselves to become the change that we wish to see in our world. It's very, very exciting. And over the next hour, we'll talk about how to get along with ourselves better how to recognize the presence of spirit within us, and how to identify the many and varied aspects of our consciousness. So, let's take a deep breath and relax now, because when we focus and when we live in this now moment, when we listen, we discover things that we didn't know we knew. We hear things in new and different ways, and we find ourselves more connected with others, less lonely, less isolated, more passionate, more enthusiastic about life. And so, let's take a deep breath, relax right where we are, Lay aside all the warring thoughts that carry on within the spectrum of our consciousness. Where did I put this? I should have done this. I shouldn't have done that. Let's just lay it aside. Again, breathe deeply. Become comfortable right where you are. And let us affirm together, I am now open and receptive to the living spirit of truth. Once again, I am now open and receptive to the living spirit of truth. And so it is. Amen. As always, let's open our service with a joy song performed by Matthew J. Evans. Good morning. Today we're going to sing We Are One in the Spirit. Please sing along with the lyrics in the bottom of the screen. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. We are one in the Spirit. Bye. 
by our love. Yes, we know we are family by our love. We will walk with each other. We will walk hand in hand. We will walk with each other. We will walk hand in hand. And together we'll spread the news of peace throughout the land. And we By our love, yes, we know we are family by our love. We will talk with each other, we will share how we feel. We will talk with each other, we will share how we feel. And the bonds of our friendship will be open and real. And we know. By our love, by our love, yes we know we are family by our love. Have a great morning, everybody. Thank you so much, Matthew. That was just terrific. We are one in the spirit. That is the truth. We are one in the Lord each of us connected by the one source of all life, love, and wisdom. And yet, each of us by divine design is individualized. Each of us is a thought, an idea in God mind. And so in order for us to understand more about God mind, we need to understand ourselves who we are, what we are, where we came from, where we are now, and where we're going. And so Charles Fillmore tells us that the knowledge of God comes not by studying any more than what we've just discussed. The study of God is a life experience that comes when we look inside of us and we are guided to see life in all of its many forms around us, learning to understand the, the microcosm, that we are the microcosm of the great macrocosm and we are co-creators with spirit. We were made in the image and likeness of the creative mind of spirit, and we are creative by nature. And so our goal is to get to know ourselves, and that, of course, is part of what our purpose is today, to talk about an aspect, aspects of our consciousness that we are not always aware that we have. The title of my talk today is called Look Who's Talking. Of course, it can also be read as Look Who's Talking. And that is something we would say to a mirror. We would say that when we are in the process of inner contemplation, which one of the many archetypes that comprise the spectrum of my consciousness, which one is finding its way to my mouth at any given time? And is that expression of that particular archetype or thought form, is it appropriate? Is it something that we can change? Is it something that we can move around? Well, this is a very exciting topic. Again, most of us think we're one self. This is challenging. Um, we talk about our authentic self, but in fact, that authentic self is comprised of many, many parts that we can either release or call forth at any given time. So what happens when we think that we are just one self? This is who I am. This is how I do things. This is how I respond to things. This is the way it is. Well, if we start to get stuck in that and get into defensive behavior, 
well, all I know is this is who I am and this is the way it is. We miss the golden opportunities to understand ourselves in our many dimensions. What would I want to say instead of, hey, this is who I am and this is the way it is? I could say, let me see if I can call forth another aspect of my consciousness that thinks about this differently. I have shared a number of times over the years that I used to suffer from writer's block. I couldn't quite accept the fact that I was being called upon to write a book or an article, and somehow that mm, lack of acceptance caused an insecurity in what I called me. And there would be times when I would sit down to write and suddenly I would be more exhausted than if I had crossed the Sahara Desert on foot. I couldn't keep my eyes open. I had to stop and rest. From what? I didn't even write, you know, the quick brown fox. And yet I would be absolutely exhausted. Other times I would get stuck on the first sentence, should it be the quick brown fox or a quick brown fox? Should it be more than one fox? You know, it would just be totally inappropriate based on a total lack of focus and a lack of self-confidence. Well, I started studying the works of Joseph Campbell, and I went to ministerial school. We studied the works of Carl Jung and the archetypes that indwell the spectrum of our consciousness. And I began to start trying this out, trying to see how this worked. If I knew that I wasn't confined to one belief or one idea about things in any given time, and so one day I sat down to write, and again, I felt dumber than dirt. And all of a sudden, it occurred to me that I could call forth the writer within me. I could call forth that inner writer and could feel the flow of ideas coming from me. And basically what I said was, if there is anybody in there that can complete this assignment, I would appreciate your showing up now because I'm not getting anywhere this way. Uh, this way. And I want to see how this works. I'm going to call forth anybody who's ever written a book. I would like to call forth from the collective consciousness a self-confidence that will know that if it's been done before, it can be done again. And if anybody did it, I could do it too. I want that aspect of consciousness to come forth. Well, of course it did. Of course it did. And I decided to really get clear about who was going to show up at any given time in future endeavors. Now, the writer is certainly not the same self that is going to be sitting, talking baby talk and playing with my two-year-old and having the time of my life playing with little toys and making different sounds of different characters. That's another self. That's my inner child. That's my playful child. Well, naturally, I'm also the mom. But when I look for that part of self that wants to play, I'm not going to call the writer because the writer is busy editing. The writer is into her head and she's got a task to do and it would be frivolous to be playing with a child. So she's not a candidate. She's, she's doing her work and I'm great to get to know her. But this inner child is so much fun that when I call her forth, the idea of playing becomes an effortless, most loving, positive, powerful, humorous, adorable experience. There are times when I've been so frightened, I have not known what to say 
or what to do. And at those moments, I know I can call forth the divine warrior within me, the hero on a journey, the overcomer, the one who will be there for me and for everyone else. I'm not going to try to force a self that is paralyzed with fear to do uh, a less than powerful job because that aspect of my own consciousness has other work to do. There are times when fear can come in handy, especially if we have an idea of crossing the railroad tracks on foot. Um, we need an aspect of consciousness that looks both ways, that considers the consequences, that relies on the help of others, that is concerned rather than uh, careless. But every one of the aspects or the archetypes in my consciousness, they're, they're, they don't all do the same thing. And so if I continue to think of myself as just one, you know, going back to the writing thing, I would just sit there as I did for just, gosh, a long, long time and say, you know, I have to wait until I become smart again. That should happen, you know, within a day or two, and I'll be able to get back to my task. Woe is me if that night was the deadline before the assignment was due. It took me a while to figure out that I couldn't play the game that way because if I did wait until the last minute and I was relying only on my present self, the one that got writer's block, then I would fail for sure. But when I found out that there were many cells occupying the spectrum of my consciousness and that I would be able to call forth any one of them at any given time, I was able to feel not only incredibly grateful, but I felt like an incredible explorer learning the many dimensions of consciousness, consciousness, learning to know myself in richer and more powerful ways and to avoid at all costs sitting down and saying, this is it, this is who I am, take it or leave it, I can't make any changes, you can't teach an old dog new tricks, not anymore. So let's Take a moment to listen to some beautiful music by Brett Mitchell and Matthew J. Evans, and then we'll talk more about our many selves. Here's a terrific tune from Harold Arlen and Yip Harburg. I hope they had a good time writing the music for Over the Rainbow, excuse me, for The Wizard of Oz. It's called If I Only Had a Brain. Sung by the Scarecrow, Ray Bolger. Trouble or in pain. With a 
some more. Oh, gosh, it's pleasing. Reason not the reason for the things I can't explain. Then perhaps I'll deserve you and be ever worthy of you if I only had a brain. Thank you so much, Brett Mitchell and Matthew J. Evans. What a delightful rendition of that classic song sung by the Scarecrow. Let's talk about him for a minute or two because the Scarecrow and, of course, all the characters in The Wizard of Oz who represent the archetypes of the hero's journey, going on a quest, going through the dark night of the soul, finding a way out that we didn't know was inside of ourselves, and then being able to celebrate that victory. The Scarecrow doesn't think he has a brain. And there's nothing in his life that ever told him he did. I mean, his job was to hang from a post and scare crows. He didn't have to think about it or analyze it. So he was pretty sure that he didn't have a brain. Well, what happened when Dorothy and the Scarecrow and the Tin Man and the Cowardly Lion got into trouble? Who was it that was quick thinking and thought of a way out? Well, it was the Scarecrow, but he didn't know it. I mean, there was much too much danger going on for any of them to sit and analyze who thought of what. But when they finally find that the wizard that they had been wanting desperately to grant their wishes was a used car salesman from Kansas or wherever, they became very, very disappointed. But the pretend wizard was a pretty, pretty sharp guy because he made sure that not only the Scarecrow but all of the characters realized that what they wanted was within them all the time. The Scarecrow wanted to have brains and he thought it meant taking brains and putting it into his head. So the Scarecrow was very limited. He just, no matter what had happened, he would see that as an anomaly. Oh yeah, I was able to think of something, but that's not really who I am, he would say. But the wizard, now this doesn't happen in the movie, it happens in the book. The wizard goes up to the scarecrow and he takes a cereal box, opens it up, and opens up the scarecrow's head and pours the cereal into the scarecrow's head and he says there now you have brand new brains i love that line i think it's a great line anyway the scarecrow now feels incredibly intelligent he also gets a diploma from a university that he never attended but those were things that he thought would make him smart And they did. He started quoting calculus and, oh, he was just all self-confident. But it wasn't the same personality that started in the movie. It wasn't the same. That part of him will always feel like he doesn't quite understand. I mean, we all have areas of expertise and areas of vulnerability, but that area of vulnerability will always be with us because we can't know everything and we can't think we know everything. So when we don't know something and we're confused, that's when we feel like the scarecrow without a brain. But the fact is that the scarecrow learned, might have learned, at least we learned for them, that he could be whatever he believed himself to be if he could manage to believe it. And so the situation was set for him, just as it was for the Tin Man, who received a watch in the shape of a heart, and it ticked, and the Tin Man opened up his the door uh, to his chest, and they hung the heart in there. He heard it 
beating and he felt like the most lovable guy in the whole world. Well, the fact is, he was always lovable. But since he didn't believe himself to be that, he couldn't demonstrate it. You can't demonstrate what you don't think you have. So when he got that ticking heart, he was able to feel so much more loving and, and sentimental, and it was just charming. And of course, the cowardly lion gets the Royal Cross of Bravery or some such medal, and he is so excited. And for the first time, he feels courageous, even though it was his courage that saved him and his friends. Again, if you don't see it, if you don't believe it, you can't demonstrate it at will because for you, it's not there. Now he got this Medal of Honor. Now he can feel brave and strong, but there'll always be a part of us that feels weak and afraid. But we can remember that anytime we feel weak and afraid, we always have within us the loving parent that can embrace us and remind us that we are safe and we are protected. I recommend reading John Bradford's book that I believe was published in 1998 called Reparenting Your Inner Child, where he uses all of the different archetypes that comprise our consciousness and allows them to aid and support one another. Wherever there is a wounded child, there is a loving adult within us that can comfort that child and can bring it to a state of peace. So what is the problem with our thinking that we have only one self? Well, I think we've seen that by allowing ourselves the flexibility to move from one self to another, to call forth a self that's more appropriate to handle the situation, we are allowing ourselves to experience life from wonderful vantage points that we didn't think were available to us. Again, when we say, I, I do this, I do that, it's extremely limiting and it's also inaccurate. It causes stress inside of us because we're always feeling unsafe and we're feeling a sense of lack because we should have things that we don't have. We should be things that we're not being. But the fact is that whatever comes our way there is an aspect of our consciousness that can lift us from where we are to where we need to be and connect us to the universe and all the thought that has ever lived. Um, that collective unconsciousness, some people refer to it as the Akashic Records, that information, storehouse of information is available to us. We can be what we want to be, what we need to be in any given situation. That's also an archetype. When we in Unity talk about the 12 powers or when we speak about the seven chakras in Hindu thought or the 10 divine emanations in the Kabbalah, we're talking about aspects of our being that we can call forth and experience. They go from the very lowest to the very highest expressions. But we study those mystical traditions because we realize that they are available to us. The many dimensions of our own consciousness. I have made wonderful use of it over the years. I love to think of myself as an accomplished speaker. Uh, that's uh, very important for my, my line of work and, and 
I enjoy believing that when I need to speak, I'll be able to do it. But you never know who's going to come to the mouth. And there are times, <clears throat> excuse me, when I have stood there and not really known what to say, not known how to say it, losing confidence in myself, even though I've been speaking for many years. And I remember one time when I was caught in a situation where I had to speak and didn't feel prepared, I took a deep breath and I said to my many selves, whoever it is that knows what I'm talking about, please come up to the mouth right this minute. I need you. And it's amazing how that level of affirmation brings forth that which we know needs to be done by us. I'm not saying this is magic. And I'm not saying that it works that effortlessly every time. But I do know this, that there are people, there have been mothers who have gone to the scene of an accident who weren't able to open up a jar of peanut butter and suddenly found themselves lifting up a car and saving their child because that's what was needed at the moment, and they needed to do it. They had that much love for their child, and this situation was so necessary that they had whatever it was that they needed to do to keep their child safe. Let's always remember that we are many dimensions of the human spirit, that we can avail ourselves of the knowledge of the universe. We each have different methods and different ways of experience it, experiencing it. But um, more times than not, I have asked that question. If there is anybody inside of me that knows how to solve this problem, I need you now. If there's anybody that understands what it feels like to be in my center. I need you now because I don't feel centered and I don't feel safe not feeling centered. With all of that power within us, many of us are sitting around saying, this is who I am, this little small box, this little tiny identity, this, this one-dimensional aspect of our being. In my lifetime, and I certainly know that I'm not the only one to have had bizarre experiences, but I have found myself trying to be saved from, from monsoons overseas, trying to find a way to stay alive in otherwise really dangerous situations finding myself in foreign countries at a loss for how to be safe. And yet, I found my strength, I found my power, I found my brains, and I was able to experience love and learning you know we all have stories of that. It doesn't have to be flood, famine, and martial law, but there are stories where each of us has have found ourselves feeling helpless and alone, only to realize that we had something within us that was far greater than our experience, something we hadn't experienced before, something we didn't know we had. So that afterwards, when we find ourselves safe and we're able to go back and relive that experience to understand what actually happened, very often we'll say, I don't know what got into me, but suddenly I found something that I didn't realize was there. Of course you did. You had to because you are alive with the life of God. You have power, you have potential, you have undiscovered areas that are just waiting 
to be tapped into to find out that we are so much more than we've ever believed ourselves to be. Learning about the archetypes is extremely helpful. Not only um, is Hero with a Thousand Faces by Joseph Campbell an immeasurable tool, the power of myth, the interviews that uh, he did with Bill Moyers, but there's an author named Carol Pearson who speaks about the archetypes in a very user-friendly way. Carol Pearson, P-E-A-R-S-O-N. I invite you to read the works of these wonderful authors and the works of Carl Jung or commentaries on the works of Carl Jung. He believed in the power of dreams to help us understand more about ourselves. There is so much out there for us to understand how to connect with those mystical aspects of our being that are unknown to us from our limited vantage point. It's so exciting to be able to feel connected to those ideas, to feel oneness of spirit, to feel that we have what it takes to do what we need to do. And if we don't manage to accomplish what we thought we should do, we also have the resources to be able to manage that time and those experiences to have the optimum solutions. Let's know that the oneness that we feel with spirit, in spirit, is our ability to access those qualities, those attributes of spirit. And as we do so, we become wiser, we become more compassionate, we also understand that there are people everywhere in the world who feel and have felt the way we have. As I said, I know that all of you have experienced your overcomer, not just once, but many times, and that many of you have been close to dying or, or feeling like you were dying and were able to somehow use your inner resources to find a way out or to find help or to be open to that help. It is a magnificent display of unconditional love to know and believe and feel and experience the many dimensions of our consciousness and to always know that there's so much to learn so much to feel, so much to be, and at the same time, so much to teach. Relax now. Take a deep breath and become aware of entering this time of inner contemplation and integration with today's message. Let us affirm internally, I am a divine being of many dimensions. I have capabilities that I have not yet tapped into. There are many identities that comprise my nature. Many forms of expression many levels of awareness.
I am open, receptive, and responsive to the many selves that occupy the spectrum of my consciousness. I am an overcomer. I am brilliant, wise, enlightened, loving. Confident, poised, and faith filled. I embrace the many dimensions of my consciousness. and feel my oneness with spirit and with all life. For all these gifts we give thanks. And so it is. Amen. Let's take a moment now to bless the tithes and offerings that we would share with Unity of San Luis Obispo. We give thanks for the opportunity to practice the tithing principle, which is a demonstration of the divine law of attraction, the divine law of giving and receiving, which says that as you give freely, you will receive 30, 60, 100 fold of that which you have given. Remember, as we discussed before, there is nothing as powerful as knowing that you have something to give. If you feel that you don't have it, if you feel a sense of lack in any area of your life, that will be a detriment. That will also demonstrate itself. But the divine law of giving and receiving used mindfully will cause us to give what we want to receive. And if we give to where we receive our spiritual good, we will definitely find that we are receiving much more of the same. Let's bless the gifts that we would share and affirm our prosperity statement together. God is my source. I am God's channel. In love and wisdom, I share my gifts. Here's a theme from the San Luis Obispo International Film Festival. I wrote for it uh, 1999. I could only think of one title, which was Festival Theme. I'll start. Thank you. 
festival theme, 1999, and I revised it recently so it would go three minutes uh, this year. Thank you so much, Brett Mitchell and Matthew J. Evans. What a beautiful, beautiful original song filled with light and inspiration and love, just like you. Well, friends, I want to announce that Unity of San Luis Obispo will begin meeting live once a month. The first Sunday of every month, we will be meeting in Meadow Park, and that will be at 1130 Pacific time. We want you to continue to watch our Sunday services at 1010 a.m. on our Facebook live stream. This is a format that has proven quite successful. We have a large number of viewers, and I feel really connected with this avenue of expression. What we're going to be doing at 11.30 once a month is talking more informally, talking about topics that are really important to the expression of our divine potential, talking about ways that we can be the change that we want to see in the world. And so we're going to design these meetings around the people who show up and around what your interests are. So those of you who live locally, we invite you to join us for our first meeting in Meadow Park. Again, um, please go to our website, unityslow.com. It's got all of the information there. And we also invite you to uh, share your email list so that we can respond to you. We also do weekly um, e-newsletters. And so we want to make sure that you're connected <clears throat> with everything. Friends, thank you for being here today. I love being here with you. Let's sing our peace song, shall we? of our prayer for protection together. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is. Friends, please press the like button and leave us your comments. We so enjoy hearing from you. Also, we'd like you to tune into the Get Off Your Affirmation podcast. We have a new one up for you that goes more deeply into our many selves that we were discussing this morning. Have a wonderful week. You deserve it. Every single person living peace in what we do only then will our dream come true only then will our dream come true only then will our dream